Hi, this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments, and I am bringing you another of our Disney travel album uh, layouts today. We're going to use a sketch from a, a recent virtual crop. I think it was last month's, um, which would have been, uh, sorry, April's um, virtual crop. And so we're going to use that, and we're going to do some photos of Main Street. Um, at the end of the evening when they make it snow in Southern California, which is kind of a novelty. Um, and so yeah, should be, should be fun and should be quick and easy. So um, let's check out my workspace. Okay, so here in my workspace I have, um, you can see I have the right hand side of the uh, layout that we did last time of the castle. And um, Today we are going to um, continue to work on um, an, an extension of that same time period. So if you know if you've been to Disneyland, you know that um, in the evenings they do special things at the castle and then at Christmas they actually do um, fun things down Main Street as well. They do a parade earlier in the evening and then they do um, the turning on of all the lights, the lighting of the tree and all of that. Um, and then after the fireworks usually, of course this time, like I said before, they um, we didn't have fireworks because of the wind, but they do snow on Main Street, which um, for us here living where I am in Utah, Snow is not a novelty, especially after this past winter, which was record breaking. But um, snow in Southern California, especially in Anaheim, is a unique thing. And sometimes, um, a lot of times, the people that are there are from places in the world that don't get snow. So um, it's kind of fun when all of a sudden it starts snowing. And of course, they help that with the lighting and everything like that. So it, it, all looks really cool and Christmassy, which is the point, and that's so fun. Okay, so today we're going to do a Christmas layout to go with these photos that we have of Main Street and all the Christmas decorations. And this one is going to follow a sketch that came from our March virtual crop. This was challenge number two from our March virtual crop. This is a one page challenge, I'm turning it into a two page layout. And um, basically, we're just going to mirror this one on a second page so that we get twice as many photos in and do the decor, the decor twice, essentially. So um, if you'll follow me, I will show you how to do that. I'm going to move my pages out of the way here for a second and grab my trimmer. And we are going to first cut... Um, we're going to cut this main white square that you can see just peeking out from behind where the photos are. Okay, and that square is going to be 10 and a half by 8 and a half, but we're going to gut it so that we have an 8 by 10 square in the middle that we can use for something else. So um, we're going to use this. I, I'm trying to remember the name that this collection or that these pages came from the name of the collection that these pages came from. If you remember, would you put it in the comments for everybody? That would be great. Um, I'm just not remembering. I think it was may have been Christmas Spirit, but I, I'm drawing a total blank. So um, if you could help me out with that, that would be fantastic. And it may help somebody else, so that would be great. So right now, and, and just to refresh your memory, this is the one with all the cute little gnomes. And so um, that's, the, that's the pack that this came from. So the first thing we are going to do is grab our arm from our trimmer and slide it out. It, it lives underneath here. And we just are going to slide that out so that we have access to it. And I want, a, I want this to be 10 and a half inches along this side. So I'm going to cut this at 10 and a half inches. And I'm going to cut it down to eight and a half, which is hard to tell where it is, but you can if you're careful. But we're just gonna 
go ahead and trim that off. Okay, and then we're gonna do eight and a half inches this way. So we've got these for another layout. We'll set those aside. And I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna cut this one just a little bit differently because I want to be able to have um, a, a 12 inch strip of this. So we're gonna do the eight and a half strip first. Eight and a half inch cut first. And we're gonna save that. I'm gonna turn this and cut it again at 10 and a half. And this one's just extra. So set it over there. All right, then what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and slide this in. And I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do a one inch frame just because it's really easy and fast to do a one inch frame for me. And um, so I'm going to bring it out here to the one inch line and I'm going to move my housing down until it go, comes to the two inch measure right here. The edge of my housing to the two inch line and that means I will start cutting at one inch and then I'm going to slide this down until I get to eight and a half and then I will have stopped one inch before my paper stops. So we're, if you're curious how this is done and you don't understand, then go ahead and um, take a look at my channel. There is an instructional video of how to make a frame like this, the quick and easy way. I just can't do that every single time that I go to make a frame or got a piece of paper. Cut that one a little too far, but that's okay. It'll be all right. All right, so I'm just going to detach it in a, in a couple of spots in the corners. And then these pieces are extra and we can set those aside for another day. We're gonna use this piece right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. So that extra piece will go over there. We've got our two frames. Now I'm going to take my green and I'm gonna cut, let's see, we're gonna cut what did we decide? Oh, I remember what I decided I was going to do. I'm going to punch this first, and then we're going to cut it. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use two punches with this layout. I'm going to use something called our Winter Town Punch, and this is from a while ago. So if you have this in your stash, you can get it out, or any, any punch that is connected will work for this one. And then I'm also going to use our Holly and Ivy Vine. And this one is um, 
this one is a what we call a chain punch, meaning that it detaches from the main page. So um, we're going to make two that do not detach, and then we're going to um, create two that do detach. And we're not necessarily going to use this paper for all of it. In fact, we probably won't. So do not despair. We're going to just go ahead and press forward. If you have not used a Creative Memories punch, these punches are designed so that you can punch a designer pattern all the way across your paper. And you can change it up if you want to, if you have multiple punches that kind of go together. A good example of that is um, our fairgrounds punch, which duels nicely with some of our other punches for things like amusement parks and theme parks. Um, sometimes the water punches go nicely together. It just kind of depends on what you're doing. But, um, so in other words, right now I'm just putting this same punch all the way across this paper, but there is also a way that you could line your punches up and intermix them, which is sometimes a fun thing to do. And I'll try to do a video on that at some point as well. Okay. So now that we have punched each of these edges, we are going to come in here with our trimmer and we're going to trim this off at two and a half inches high. You see this measurement right here? I know that's kind of difficult to see in the picture, but two and a half inches high. So the church steeple is the tallest thing on this punch. So we're going to line up the church steeples at two and a half on our grid and go ahead and trim two pieces of this green. And I'm going to take those annoying little tiny bits that are on the very end off so that we don't have those. Okay, so we've got these two. Now I'm going to take my, um, it's the most wonderful time of the year, that's what this paper says, and I'm going to take this and we're going to cut around the words very carefully. So I'm going to come down here just underneath the words and go ahead and cut and then I'm going to slide this over just a little and we're going to cut just above the words so just make it make sure it's even and straight you should be good I just moved mine there we go This is going to go on here, at least that's the idea, although it is longer than I expected, so maybe what we'll do is we'll center that going across. Now I'm going to cut off just a tiny bit of this because again I want a piece just like this one where it's just 
the words. that over. Let's measure this and see. Ooh, it's just a hair under an inch. So that will help me. Just a little bit under an inch. Like about there. So there's our second one. That is extra. All right, now. Oh, you know what? I remember what I was going to do here. I was going to make that a little bit shorter because what I wanted was to be able to make this four inches by four inches. And I didn't remember, so I didn't get it done. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. This piece is now four and a half, and I need two four by four squares out of this piece. So I'm going to cut this at four inches. I'm gonna cut two of them. So there's one. I'm gonna come back in here and cut this one at two inches. This one will be extra. We'll toss it over there. Oh, except that it's not extra yet. I don't know what I'm thinking. I need an extra half an inch of each of these so we can add them together to make our four by four. Hopefully it will turn out okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to assemble these and then I'm going to save the holly um, and ivy punch and we may, we will do that but it will be um, after we get these other things assembled on here. Okay. So. Let me just get these moved off and onto our pages. Move our pages back. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to take my permanent adhesive and I'm just going to add a few spots of permanent adhesive all the way down. Then I'm going to take it and make sure that it's um, that the words are reading left to right. And I'm going to go ahead and place that all the way across. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Like so. Okay, now what we're going to do is remove these pieces over here. This piece is going over here. This piece is going over here. Like so. Okay. Maybe we won't worry about the holly going on here. Maybe we might not need it. That's what I was wondering about, honestly. Let's 
So we'll see. Okay. So this is going to go roughly a half an inch from the top and about three quarters of an inch from either side. Really, as long as it's not crooked, you are okay. I think that looks straight. Just like that. Then we're going to go ahead and and use a little bit of repositionable adhesive across the buildings just to kind of hold the border in place. And we're just going to center this so that we have about um, a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch from the bottom and about the same distance from the frame at the top. So just center this like so. This page is going to be the same. Oh my goodness, I just keep catching stuff on everything. So if I was, if I really want to make sure this is going to be the same distance and even, I put my pages together just like that and then I can measure or make them match, okay? And then they should be level all the way across. going to do the same thing with this one. Center it, make it the same level from the top of the church or, or schoolhouses at the bottom. All right, now because of the nature of the photos that I have <clears throat> to use on this layout, do you see how it says we can do two horizontal six by fours and one four by four photo? So I'm gonna need to, possibly I, I would need to trim a couple of these. However, given that um, I, second sorry I'm thinking while well, I'm talking and it's not working out for me tonight um, <laughs> given that I have several of these photos where um, the photo is vertical I included a couple of vertical photos in with these horizontal photos so that I can include them in this layout. So bear with me here. I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. Instead of cutting these into four by fours, I want to see all of this photo or most of it. I am going to trim off the black from the top of here and make this a little bit shorter, but I want to see the whole Christmas tree in this picture. So I'm not going to trim it down to be a four by four. I am going to keep it a little bit bigger. It's going to end up being about five and a quarter by four, which is okay. We're making the edges of the photos match and centering them in the frame. 
So this one, let me see if I can cut this one just a smidge. But I liked it because it's Haley walking with her dad, which is cool. And you can see the ice cream and the whole rest of Main Street. So actually, maybe I'll just leave that one the way it is. Because I don't want to have to take three quarters of an inch off of it. So we'll just leave it. It'll be all right. All right. So let me go ahead. I'm going to adhere these down. And, and then I have another step. So I'm just going to hold this one where it needs to be like that and I'm going to place this one that has the adhesive already on it where it needs to be. We'll put the adhesive on this one. Line that up. This one up like so. Then we're gonna take and we're gonna line up. Remember how I cut this from paper that was not quite long enough to be square, right? So I'm going to add the extra piece to the bottom so it's not as noticeable, right? And I'm going to go ahead and add this piece on here like so. Okay, so there's that one. Now we're going to do this one. and. If I didn't want to have um, embellishments in a, in a certain spot, then I could rearrange the photos and make them um, and put them a little bit differently. We could use this as our journal box and our uh, main um, our main title area, and then um, add. If we if we rearrange this just a little bit, then we can add embellishment here, but it will be sorry, hang on, I'm thinking as I'm I'm talking while I'm thinking and it's like I said before, it's just not working out. Okay, so ultimately we want to be able to put some embellishments on this page and we want them to be balanced. And if I make my photos balanced by making my long photos here and the other photos here, then that puts all of my embellishing right in the middle. I don't, know, I don't think I really want that. I want to be able to journal and or put a title right here maybe maybe just journal right here and put in a, a small embellishment and then I want to be able to to have my title and some embellishment over here and maybe a little bit of something to embellish in one other tiny little wow. corner so that's why I'm going to keep these right about like this and the layout of the photos is the same, which is not really what I would prefer most of the time, but that's what I'm going to go with this time. Okay, so we're just going to, I'm going to hold this photo where it needs to be, line this one up that I just added adhesive to. Go ahead and stick it down. All right. 
There we go. Okay, so then we're going to do the same thing with these pieces. like that. Okay, now as far as embellishing goes, and I should remind you that the sketch actually calls for another piece below what we punched and the um, trim that matches the frame, but because I wanted all of the words in this piece, this white piece, I didn't have enough room to be able to put another piece below it. So, um, and I don't think we miss it that much. It's, um, if you know it's supposed to be there, maybe it is noticeable and, and lacking a little, but um, without knowing that it's supposed to be there, I think, it, I think it's okay. I think it works. All right, so I pulled a couple of cute little embellishments that I had left for Christmas and thought would be fun and I thought maybe what I would do is um, is go ahead and and just see what what speaks to me let's just see what looks good and what works we've got those, we've got those I've got another iteration of the most wonderful time of the year, which could be fun. I have a star, which we could put with it, which is also another fun element. Holly Jolly Christmas. I have a journal card that I could use for a journal box. So we could put these two things up here together maybe hide this one underneath maybe not because I can't seem to lift that up which is okay <laughs> we could stick that right there or we could angle them together like this and put the star together at the top which would be cute. I kind of like this with the with the angel. We could just put that right in the center, pop the angel up on top, and then maybe Rather than using the circle, we could just do a church with the tree behind it. Right here. Or maybe put the tree behind it going on the other side. move that more towards the middle. And do it more like that. I think something like that is what we're going to go with today. All right, so let me grab my foam squares and we will be done with this in no time. Okay, so let's do this one real quick. So 
we're just gonna center that guy right in the middle of our four by four square. We're gonna put a foam square on the back of our angel. And make her fly right through the middle of that wreath. That's cute. I'm going to use my precision cut scissors and I'm just going to cut off the base of this because we really don't need that pot underneath the tree. And I'm just going to go ahead and adhere the tree, kind of peeking out behind the chapel. And then we'll pop that up with some foam squares. I feel like this needs just a little something else too, but I don't know what we could add to it. So you'll have to look at the final photo and see if I've added anything after thinking about it for a minute. Okay, so we're just going to put that guy right there. And then I'm going to put this guy down right so, so that I can journal. This guy down like so. And then we'll put a foam square on the back of the star. Carefully so that it doesn't show any anywhere. that star right in there. Okay. Wonderful. I believe that is a wrap for this layout. What do you think? Pretty quick and easy. Pretty quick and easy. I'm thinking I wish I had done this when it was time to be able to turn in photos for the virtual crop, which is happening, uh, let's see, Mother's Day weekend. So I'm not sure when this is going to air. It might be before Mother's Day. It might be after. I can't remember for sure. Um, so hopefully before, and then you'll know about the virtual crop. Or hopefully you already know about the virtual crop. At any rate, thank you for joining me. And I hope to see you next time. And until then, I hope you have many more creative moments. Thanks so much. Have a great day.